Hiya. Hello. How's it going? Uh, it's going good. I'm having just like, I feel like I'm having a really good day and I hope that you are too. I, I am. Um, yes, I, I'm having a very good day so far. It's my birthday, the day we're recording, which is why Pilot said that. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, thanks for asking. It's uh, it's, it's uh, been a good day so far. Nice. Well, uh, this uh, welcome to you and welcome to everybody else. This is our final session of our Newsletters with Ghost Flex course. And today we're going to be uh, talking through how to use the ghost interface. So session one was why ghost and what you might do with your newsletter. Session two was how do you get set up? How do you set up ghost? How do you set up Mailgun? Get all the technical stuff squared away. And now that that's been taken care of, we're going to walk you through just what ghost is like as a platform. Um, this is going to be uh, sort of a beginner friendly walkthrough of all of the stuff that we think is useful day to day information. Um, and uh, we're going to start out just by showing how to make new admin users. But before we do that, I do need to issue a correction, which is that in our last video, I said that .yacht was a valid top-level domain extension, and it's not. .yachts is correct. Uh, thank you so much for bearing with me, um, and I hope you will forgive this mistake. We're sorry if, the la if that makes the last session unwatchable. Um. Yeah, we, we understand, but... You know, we hope that you'll stick with us nonetheless. Um, but yeah, so we can get started with, I think the first thing off the bat will be creating a new admin user. Um, so uh, Ghost differentiates uh, between uh, admin users, um, they call them staff, and members or subscribers. Um, and we'll show you how to create members on the back end later. But for now, uh, let's walk through uh, getting set up with staff. So this is the newsletter from the front, Taylor. Uh, and one thing I, I wanted to specifically, I, I'm sorry, just to derail us immediately, um, but uh, I wanted to specifically mention this because I actually had a question from someone recently about this, um, and, and that is in Reclaim Cloud, there's a link, uh, that's your environment URL, so that's the domain, the not mapped domain, basically what, what it was at before you mapped the domain. And someone asked if that will update to whatever you map it to. And the answer is no. So like in our case here, you do have to just go to mycoolnewsletter.com because that's the domain that we mapped. Um, and then to log in, we have to go to mycoolnewsletter.com slash ghost. Yeah. So. And that'll, if you do that, it'll redirect you to the dashboard. Yeah. Um, and this is what it looks like uh, behind the scenes. So I think first of all, we're going to get started on... Uh, adding another staff member, Taylor, I would love to be added to this, please. Yes, so um, so we can add you in here. Um, we just need to go to the settings at the bottom here, mm -hmm. and then um, staff in the left side here. Nice. And Nicely I labeled. can see that we've added a test account for you uh, mm -hmm. already. Do you want me to add your um, normal email address? Or? Yeah, sure, why not? Great, so inviting folks is not hard at all, so we can just put in the um, email address of the person, and then mm -hmm. you actually get to pick, there is still roles for staff, mm -hmm. just like WordPress actually. So administrators can do everything, editors can do less, authors can do less, contributors can do less. Um, yeah. I really like that they have these descriptions right here. Um, yeah, so. that's, a, that's a big thing with, um, so WordPress one doesn't really differentiate materially between subscribers and what is in Ghost staff members. Uh, and it also doesn't really explain the permissions up front really well. I always have to go to the documentation yeah. and find a list. The do documentation explains it well, but you do have to go there. Um, yeah. So, First. Um, yeah. So we'll send that and uh, Pilot will get an email. Um, mm -hmm. And so the other nice thing here is you've got this sorted sort of list of folks that have been invited and mm -hmm. um, folks who have uh, accepted, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to go in and uh, accept the invitation right now because we've got a lot to do, but that's the process. Um, that's how my test. That's my, how my test account was set up, and that's what you would do for any uh, admins that you want to invite to your site or editors, authors, contributors. Sweet. Um, yeah, really simple, really straightforward. Uh, thank you, Ghost. Mm -hmm. Um, I have just, I have a whole list, uh, but I think now that we've added a new admin user, 
uh, administrator powers, one of the things that we can show off is something that you can do as an admin, which is to change the theme. Um, everybody knows that the most important thing that you do when you make a new account on anything is to make it look nice. You need to make it look right. Yeah. Content very much secondary. <laughs> yes. Let's make it, let's, let's, let's change the look. Well, if you're like, if you happen to be like pilot and I, it does help kind of conceptualize the mindset right? that you want yeah, going. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And so Ghost actually has this let's get started thing right here. It says customize your design. I am going to say that we should walk through how to get there if you don't have that menu there. Yeah, um, let's actually, I'm going to hit this skip button. We're going to assume that you accidentally got rid of this and you never yeah. see it again. So this is normally right here. What the dashboard looks what like. What the dashboard looks like. Yeah. So uh, Taylor, to get to the themes, I believe that you would go actually back into that gear menu that we were just in. Um, but instead of heading to staff, you're going to scroll down the, the, the thingy, the menu. Um, and if you just keep going, it will maybe there's something about design. Oh man. I was just looking at this literally just now. Um, design and branding. It's under site second section. Yes. So that'll take you here. Uh, there's a couple options, uh, to, uh, design and branding, which is where we're headed navigation to set up menus and then announcement bar, which is for if you want to do call to action or like important news stuff. We have never had cause to use that, but I think that also might be a newer feature. It which is means, pretty new. Yeah. Um, and even e even the the navigation, they, so they had nav this before. Mm -hmm. um, and it, again, I, I kind of, I personally like how simple this is. It's just mm -hmm. put a name, put a URL in. It's maybe simpler for folks to use the WordPress method where it asks you to like pick a category, whereas this you have to know the URL of what, whatever you want to link to. But mm -hmm. um, I kind of like how straightforward it is. But secondary menus are actually new <laughs> um, and weren't in a lot of ghost themes before. So that's that's a whole new feature. And yeah, I've never even looked at the announcement bar, but um, uh, oh, let's, cool. so you can let's see choose. who can see it. Um, hey there, this is. An announcement. And if you hmm. ah okay, oh, no, I see it. I see it. Top. Wait at the top. There you go. Oh, and then it looks like you can make it. Um, if you want, you could you can change the color scheme, presumably to match, uh, one of the color schemes set in the design and branding section. Because you know, if we change it so that hot pink is not, uh, part of the I love hot pink, but if we change it so that it's not part of the look, presumably it'll give you something else. Yeah. Um, it is cool that it just has. This is a nice, very simple way to implement this again. Yeah. So, um, this is not going to cover every possible design and use case you'd want, but it does give you something. Um, yeah. You know that would fit a lot of needs, which is kind of kind of how Ghost operates, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's it it is in this in uh, usually in this interesting middle zone where you can do very easily almost everything you'd ever need, and if you need to do something beyond that, well, okay, now you basically have to like develop it. But there isn't a lot of stuff that is in that territory, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that's nice. I like that. So we'll go into, uh, I've waffled around long enough. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, we'll go into design and branding now. And um, first, what it takes you to is this will look pretty much like, I think it's not exactly like the old customize menu in WordPress is sort of what this reminds me of. You've got a menu on, in this case, the right um, and settings that you can change there instead of the full site editor. Um, but so yeah, you can pick your accent color. So presumably if we changed that, that would change other stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, That's a terrible color. Um, uh, you know, yeah. Let's, let's a little make bit. this just like uh, really awful. There you go. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're, we're getting there. Um, but so you can change sort of the overall brand look, uh, icon, logo, accent color, site description. Um, you can make site-wide design changes. Um, if you look up the top, Taylor, there's those tabs. Um, so where the logo is, the overall background color. So if you wanted to make that really terrible color, our background color, and just ruin the video experience for like 30 seconds for people, um, you could uh, do that. Um, font. Yeah. <laughs> nope. There it is. Oh, God. Change it back. Change it back. <laughs> Don't do that. No. Um, you can change the font. Uh, again, they have those sort of three settings, which, uh, it sort of covers a lot of that. Um, and then you can make specific changes at the homepage and post level. Um, 
And I don't know if we need to go too deep into that, but the general theme, no pun intended, that we're seeing here is that Ghost is very good at, like, intuitive, user-friendly, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you've uploaded a, a logo. Um, yeah. And that's the EdTech logo. Grab the EdTech logo. Try to pick a pink. You know what I could even do here? This is so not what we're doing, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, there you, the right there you go. The right color pink. Very important. From the logo. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now it right. kind of matches. Perfect. Um, now we can go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, but so uh, in general, what you're going to see is a lot of this, of Ghost is pretty user-friendly to look at and say, like a lot of these features um, we didn't have available because Ghost has updated several times since we, when we made the roundup, Ghost has added several of these features since then. Um, yeah, a lot of the stuff I manually implemented on our roundup site with CSS, yeah. basically. And, and now you don't have to. Yeah. Um, which is really nice. Uh, that's it. So uh, we're going to now change the theme. So if you go right down to the bottom where it says change theme, actually, you can go in there. Um, I think by default, we're using Casper, but there's a lot of free themes that you can use. Source was the one that we were just. Oh, we are. Yeah. We we're using source. Okay. So let's do, um, I don't know, let's do solo or something. Uh, how about that? Cool. And it'll say up the top, install. Um, and it'll just say, has it been installed? You want to activate it? Sure, let's activate it. Uh, and that's what it looks like now. Um, and it's totally changed the look. Uh, one of the things that I've never personally done, but Taylor, you and I have talked about, is des developing a theme for Ghost is substantially easier than developing for WordPress. Um, yeah. It's I not necessarily so. easy, but I think easier was the operative term. I think if you're comfortable with HTML and CSS, if you download a, a, a ghost theme from like GitHub mm -hmm. and just look at the files, you'll kind of immediately see what's going on. It's a very basic template language that is basically just HTML plus mail merge. <laughs> so okay. uh, it literally is, there's little tags that go in the HTML that have file names. So it'll say, oh, we're gonna, you know, put insert this file here and then um, or insert this variable here. Um, so you can kind of look at a ghost theme and pretty, I, I think pretty, re if you spend enough time, you'll be able to figure it out without having to like program uh, it or like use like PHP or understand node, which is what ghost is written in. Mm -hmm. You really don't have to do that. You're just modifying HTML basically. Yeah. One of the things on my to-do list is to uh, figure out how to do that because I know enough HTML and CSS to know that I don't know enough yet. Um, but it's still uh, more achievable than my previous goal, which was to design that WordPress theme we were talking. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like uh, WordPress child theme, which is kind mm -hmm. of what kind of the similar equivalent, isn't that different? Um, okay. Really, uh, it, it, it is. It is a little bit different. Like there's WordPress themes are capable of so much more. Mm -hmm. So there is some like PHP code in there that you have to kind of figure out what, where you want to make your changes. Uh, it's, it's on my list. Like I'm currently working on moving my blog over to WordPress and I want to make a child theme that I maintain just mm -hmm. because I want to learn how to do that basically. <laughs> um, and I did do that for our event calendar site. It's, it's yeah. really not that bad, um, okay. but, but I would say for me, this was more approachable to make changes as someone who had before running a ghost site only experience with like hand coding in HTML, a very, very basic mm -hmm. HTML site. This was not a two, not a, not completely unapproachable given enough time. Okay. And you know what, if you don't have that much time and you don't want to approach it, that's fine because changing a theme is, we just showed you how you can just yeah. change it. Yeah. I did it cause I wanted to learn how to do it. <laughs> that yeah. was really the only reason. <laughs> Um, that I, I have just like a, a, just a list of bullet points and we are checking them off real fast. Um, but I think the next thing on my list was, so, uh, we showed you how to add people to the team. We've showed you how to make sure your site looks fun and funky, fresh, um, and, and good. Uh, I think the next thing 
We're still not going to add any content yet. We're not doing that yet. First, we need to know your content will reach people before we do that. Um, so I think we're going to show how to add new subscribers. Um, and so if you go out of settings, I think you just hit escape maybe. Um, oh. Yes, uh, that, that works. Otherwise, there is an X. Uh, oh, yeah, there's the also very, an X. Very top exactly. right. I also want to mention, too, just in case folks don't know, um, people can subscribe themselves, too. Yes. So uh, we'll show how to do it on the back end. So if you want to add some people that you know want to sub get email notifications from your ghost site, that's a way to I do it. I give you importing. But if I really quickly here open a private... I mean, you can window, add me. Uh, you can add, you can add, I'm not a subscriber yet either. Well, I just wanted to show what this looks like logged out. So oh, yes, when yes, I'm yes. not logged in, it looks like this. There's a subscribe button. And in this particular theme, mo most themes, honestly, mm -hmm. it even has a little form. So you click on it, people really just put in their name and then um, I'll, I'll put in. You can do mine. Know. Sure. Well, yeah. Um... We'll, co we'll commit a little bit of identity fraud. It's fine. No, there's, there's no conflict between having your email attached to a membership or having them attached to staff. I have separate subscriptions and admin accounts on Reclaim the Blog. Oh, so that way you get the actual, yeah. So that yeah, I was... You know what? I do too. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's an important thing to note too, is just because mm -hmm. you're a staff member, it doesn't mean everyone in your staff member list gets email updates. They also have to separately opt yeah. in to that. Um, so it's really simple though. They literally just will put in their name and email and hit sign up and it does do the confirmation email thing. So Pilot will get an email that says, hey, please confirm this. And I, I um, it's interesting that it says three minutes, um, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> I love that they put a time on it, but um, uh, in my experience, it's always uh, sent out immediately. Quite quick, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, but there uh, you go. Yeah, um, so it's very simple for folks to do that. And then the other cool thing, so now that we've shown that, I, I will actually do the same. Yeah. Um, or no, you know what? Let's add my myself. Oh, I, I did already do the same. Okay. I think, I think you did that last week. Yeah. Um, so one of the things, though, is people can manage their subscriptions from here, too, which is really great. So... Um, yeah, and we'll come back to that later because we're going to um, show how to set up multiple feeds down the line. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so let's show how to import or set up members uh, just th from within Ghost, from within the admin uh, interface. So if you go yeah, to members, which you're already doing, um, then uh, if you go up to the top, there's that little gear menu. Or no, let's do, let's do new member first. Yeah. Uh, so I actually made test data for this. Um, I made a whole CSV of test data. It's not very long, but it, I did do it. Uh, and this is such a silly, ridiculous joke. My favorite um, fake higher ed institution is uh, Unseen University mm -hmm. from Discworld, which is a, a university of useless wizards, except for this one guy, Ponder Stibbins, who is, you know how every institution has that one person who just does everything that nobody else can be bothered to do. Ponder Stibbins does that and he's got a rough life. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, uh, we can add Ponder Stibbins, whose email is misc at unseenuni.disc. Uh, note uh, is not useless. Um, yeah, and this is, as you can see by the description, <laughs> just for the purposes of you, the administrator of Ghost. Mm -hmm. you, this is just a note field, that's all it is. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he will be subscribed to our My Cool Newsletter newsletter. And then you can just hit save and it will uh, set him up. It's all saved. And if you go back to the members list, um, he should be right there. Sweet. Sweet. Um, and so that's how if you add one person at a time. If you want to add lots of people at a time, you can go into the, yes, the gear menu and import members. Um, so they actually have links to documentation about, uh, this is really nice. They have links to documentation about importing and they also have a sample CSV file um, that you can download if you don't know how to format yours. Yeah, um, and it is nice because you can give it basically any CSV file mm -hmm. and, and tell it, oh, this is the field for people's names. This is the field for people's emails and stuff like that. But it's, I love that they give you a sample. So I'll just open up their sample here because this sample Gotta make has, it a little bigger. I think if you can zoom in a little bit, the text uh, yeah. is pretty small. Um, there we go. Give you a sample that is already formatted with basically every possible field, mm -hmm. which is, 
I don't actually I'm not 100 percent sure if this is every possible field, but I, I it's quite a lot. most of them, mm -hmm. um, including things like if you have a paid newsletter with Stripe mm -hmm. set up, even that has a field and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so really cool. Very good. Um, so I uh, I made that CSV, Taylor, um, and I think you have access to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can just drag and drop it. Um, this will go right there. Um, you just drag and drop the test email or the oh, test CSV. I did the wrong one. I'll hit start over. It's okay. There we that, go. There we go. Um, and so you see it is not importing name. Uh, it should import name as name. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure why it does that. Uh, or if, I think I maybe just need to make name lowercase. It like might need, I, yeah. It, yeah. It's not, a, but this, this is a good example of, you can see, you can give it a CSV and kind of whatever format yeah. um, and just tell it, oh, that's the email field. You know, oh, this is the name field. And it's just simply looking at the first row here, basically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I do think um, the one thing I ran into is uh, I was importing something recently and I had a first name and a last name field and Ghost doesn't nope. do first name, last name. It just wants one name field. Yeah. So I have had to, to merge those. But, merge. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I, I was able to just do that in Google Sheets. It wasn't too bad. So yeah. And one of the things right before you hit it, uh, we're not going to see an example of this, but they have a little note underneath, which is if an email address in your CSV matches an existing member, they will be updated with the mapped values. So that means that if you have someone who changes their name um, or someone who changes their status and they're in your reimport, uh, any fields that are attached to them will be updated to match the mapped values, except for email. Um, that won't overwrite, and it won't overwrite anything that is not included. So if um, Rid Cully here had a, 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 what are the other fields? Um, what, what's the other things in the dropdown? Yeah, so if there was something in the, uh, his, if he already had a Stripe customer ID and we re-imported him through a CSV, it wouldn't, this doesn't have an ID listed, so it wouldn't turn it blank. It would just yeah. not touch it. Yeah, but if it had if if it if that was a column and the column and it had something in that column, it would overwrite it. Um, yes, from the CSV, and it's probably especially important to note the subscribe to emails one because mm -hmm. I think the potential there is that you could so uh, folks can unsubscribe right and uh, on their own and they stay as a, a known mem member in your ghost, but it will mark them as unsubscribed. Yep. which is actually important because you if you accidentally import them again and mark them as subscribe to emails yes now you've signed them back up mm -hmm. which you probably don't want to do if they've specifically opted out so yeah we don't include the subscribed to a, a column for subscribe to emails in yeah. our uh whenever we're importing things when i'm which, importing folks i'm really just doing name and email typically yeah pretty much so let's import them um uh we just hit import and it will boom six people not very not very slow very very fast but you can see we have all of these new members this is filtering just the members who are labeled with today's import um it, this is a very silly joke uh i spent more time on this than i maybe needed to. <laughs> I, I put more thought i didn't spend that much time i put more thought into this than i maybe needed to um it was background processing time you know yeah if you like discworld uh pause this video right now and read through and tell me whether you think i'm funny <laughs> i think i'm funny <laughs> um yeah so that's how you add members one at a time or in bulk um it, and with that i think we've uh taken care of all of the important setup things we've added staff we've made the site look nice and we've uh, added people who will receive your emails when you make posts. So let's make a post. Awesome. All right. Mm -hmm. So we'll go over here and hit the post button. Post. And this, of course, it had. There is a coming soon post um, in uh, Ghost. So you That's... probably want to get rid of it, honestly. Um, <laughs> they put but... that there as like a, a dummy data, essentially. Yeah. This is your hello world post, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually. I am going to leave it here in our case, but just pointing that out that you probably will want to delete that. I've seen a few ghost blogs. In fact, I wonder if Reclaim the Blog has coming soon on it. Uh, anyway, um, but 
it not Surely necessarily not. you don't need to delete it right because it is true at one point that blog was coming soon so i'll check um, after we're done recording this and so so uh, folks watching will never know whether it was yeah. there or not <laughs> that's our secret yeah um but yeah so if you go and you hit new post uh you can just get started um with i don't know post title super yeah this is a, a really cool post um you can uh just insert text i'm very fast mipsum. at typing obviously did she how did you do that <laughs> i have i use a text expansion thing oh right Laura, right right Laura you mipsum have some is in one is in there so, taylor's got that. so many shortcuts uh set up it's very cool um but yeah so ghost does uh something interesting it's a little bit like the block editor um each i think of them as paragraphs but there really are blocks is of a different type um, the most common one's going to be text, but there's also image, markdown, HTML, gallery for displaying multiple images, divider. Uh, you can get to like bookmark, um, embedding email buttons and things like that. Um, uh, so if you do bookmark, it's going to be like a little embedded. Well, it might take a second. Um, but in my experience, bookmark usually does like a little embedded rectangle with a picture and then some of the text. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? That doesn't work because um, that probably doesn't work because we have a redirect on that page to go to yep. www. There you go. Um, there yeah, go. see, there you go. Uh, and that's what that'll look like. Um, I, uh, I don't think we need to go through all of the different potential ones. Um, there's certainly documentation on what types are available. Um, but it's worth noting that you can also get these up by typing uh, slash and then whatever the name of the block is. So uh, uh, if you you can see slash image will get you an image. Um, if you just do slash image enter, then it'll bring that pop up for you to uh, choose from. If you do slash image space, image space, and then you copy paste the URL at which a image lives, it'll embed that image from the URL. Um, so this is how we get GIFs in, for example. Uh, every month the Roundup has GIFs. And uh, I do that by just going to Giphy and getting the image, the share the share link for the GIF that I want. Um, and there's you know pros and cons to, up, uh, to uploading versus to embedding. Um, embedding yeah. means you're not storing a bunch of stuff on your site, but it also means links break. Yeah, and and also there's implicate imp, potential implications too of like uh, this isn't this isn't really like a <laughs> like a legal thing at all, but um, like the I sometimes feel better about linking to something and then attributing it than mm -hmm. I do uploading my own copy because should that person choose to take it down, it's gone from my site too. So the, yeah. there are times where you want to make that distinction, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of a quick primer to posts. Um, and there really are quite a lot of different types. Uh, we haven't experimented with a lot of them. Um, product. product. Wow. Rating. Yeah, no. So we've never done this. I don't, uh, th th this is a beginner's course. We're not including that. Um, <laughs> uh, and then there's different types of embeds, uh, yeah. that you can do YouTube, uh, and, and ghost is actually pretty smart. So if you make a block and then you just paste a YouTube URL in and you don't type slash YouTube, it'll still go, oh, I know what that is. That's YouTube. Yeah, and it'll it's, look at it. it's doing the same thing WordPress does. Like there's, I forget what it's called, but there's a standard for these types of embeds mm -hmm. and um, a lot of services. So my the other thing is it will work with a lot more things than in this list too. Yes. But um, just like WordPress, if you paste a YouTube URL in and hit enter, it will just embed the the video for you, yeah, uh, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of things. You can even put a little sign up link for your newsletter right embedded with. I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure the use case there, but you know, if you're making uh, a page. <laughs> oh yeah, make... sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. You can even do Markdown right in here, and it's it's a very nice Markdown editor in that it supports all of the stuff. So, yeah. um, the one of the things I always look out for with Markdown editors is do they support footnotes or not? Because I like footnotes in my blog posts, um, and uh, some of them don't, but Ghost does. So nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Oh, probably we could add a featured image. Should we do that? Yeah, sure. You can add the maybe the EdTech logo again. Yeah, um, so you can do this and use the picker. Um, you can also add alt text and caption mm -hmm. uh, separately, which is super nice. Yeah, and it's got that nice toggle we were talking about last time as well. Uh, if you scroll down to the to the GIF, that'll also have that toggle um, that you can show off. Uh, so you can say, ah, spooky ghost. Um, and then alt text, uh, uh, cartoon ghost waving his arms. Um, and that's, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it has a Scooby-Doo look to it. Um, yeah. but, uh, that's, we, we talked about this either last time or the time we've talked about this. I think it's really nice and it really promotes best practices that setting up alt text is as simple as captioning, uh, and right with a little there. toggle. It's yeah. right there. Yeah. I also, I agree. Um, it, I really like that the way that Ghost does that. It's right inside and confronting you on every image, basically. Mm -hmm. um, it's very nice. I also want to mention too that I like that there's built in Unsplash. So you can do this inside. You can go embed Unsplash and search for public domain images yeah. on Unsplash, which is cool. But it also works on the featured image thing, which is really nice because yeah. I frequently find myself being like, what? I, <laughs> you know, featured images do? are so good, but they're also the bane of my existence. I don't I like can't choose. It's one of the things that I want to remove from my blog in the future is I want to remove featured images because mm -hmm. I don't like the obligation. <laughs> yeah. But this also Unsplash will auto credit, which is nice. Yeah, I love that. Super, it's really cool. good. Um, um, and then you can add whatever alt text you want. Uh, you can hit preview and it'll just show you um, if you do that, it'll give you a sense of what it looks like. This is also a shareable link. So uh, if you go up to that little oh. fake browser tab, you hit that, it'll copy it, and then you can, this is a share, sh it's a shareable preview link. Um, yeah. This is uh, every month when the roundup is getting set to go out, I will put this into our Slack channel and just have everybody go through it. And that's how. That's cool. um, yeah. Oh, and you can also look at it on uh, mobile. How will it look on mobile? How will it look on email and then i guess if this is a thing that people are particularly uh concerned about how it's going to preview onto facebook well and again this is that this is that um how is it going to like come through in i forget i, for, I should know what this is called it's i think it's like o embed or something there's some yeah. standard by which the um the uh image and also the title and description comes through and it's really cool that you can kind of see that, especially because you can also really, whoop, uh, really easily edit those things. So if yes. you go in the sidebar here. Yeah. So you can um, change the URL from here and do a bunch of other stuff. Yes, that's actually, and, and then down there is the meta card. If you scroll down again, you can see there's the metadata, X card, Facebook, you can change what it looks like. Um, I will say one thing that I want to, uh, point out for people's benefit is Taylor, if you go into the main body of the post, please, mm -hmm. and then you change the title to uh, this for an even better title. Um, if you close the menu and reopen it, you'll note that the URL slug has not changed. Mm -hmm. You have to make that change yourself, um, which means that if you do like I do and you say, uh, you you start a draft and in the title space, you put figure out the title later. <laughs> um, you should remember to check that before you send it out <laughs> because it is possible to edit it later, um, but then you have to uh, set up redirects and things. And it's not that hard. I think we have documentation, but you do have to do it. Yeah, you, you, you don't have to set up a redirect, but what will happen is if you send that link out there via the email, Mm -hmm. When people try to visit the web-based version, they'll get a 404 unless yeah. you set up a redirect. So um, exactly. I don't know if we have documentation, but we can we've definitely done it. Redirect. Yeah, we've done it. Um, and it, Ghost has a built-in redirect thing. It's a little bit weird, but it is in there and it's not that hard to figure out. We can even look at it later if we have time. So Yeah. Um, cool. Well, uh, I think we actually, we can even hit publish because there's only 
two subscribers who have real emails. I specifically checked and dot disk is not real. And those people aren't, they're not, we're not going to accidentally send spam to some random people. So you have options here. You can publish an email, uh, you can publish only. Um, so if you're doing a blog, but you're not having anybody receive things, you can do that. Or you can do email only, which is to say that's not going to end up on your site, but people will receive it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, you're, you're, you're way ahead of me. You can, uh, well, you, you know, we'll go in order. All eight subscribers, um, if you click that open, uh, if you go to specific people, um, you would be picking based on label. So if you do import, you won't get Taylor and you won't get me and you won't get Ponder Stibbins mm -hmm. um, because those people were not part of the CSV import. Uh, if you label things like wizards, you uh, you would have to go through and label all the wizards, but yeah. you wouldn't get Taylor and you wouldn't get me. But it is important, like you said, it do, you are typing a label in here. So yeah. you can't put it like a person's name in this box. No. Um, what we have um, done on the blog is I have a test label. Mm -hmm. I think I might be the only person in there right now. But sometimes I will use the test label to like send some test messages out. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then um, uh, so we'll send it free to everybody. And then you can say, do I want to do it right now? Or do I want to schedule it for later? So if we're going to put this cool post out, uh, like tomorrow at 10 a.m., you can do that. Um, 10 says. It is in UTC, which I I love that they label it, though. Um, yes. And this is because the server's time zone is in UTC. You can change this in Reclaim Cloud, by the way. But for a lot of reasons, it can be just simpler to just do the conversion from UTC. So yeah. Let's, I um, actually, I have a time zone shortcut uh, bookmarked on my uh, hotbar. Me too. Wait, I don't. I did. Oh, that's why. That's because I put it here on my new tab page. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> um, so tomorrow, what was it 10 a.m. you said? Yeah, 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Why did I even do that? All right. Um, the time zones are the same every day. Yes. <laughs> 2 p.m. UTC. UTC. Let's go. 15. And so that'll go out tomorrow at 2 p.m. UTC, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and then if you hit publish and send, that looks really scary because you're like, oh, God, it's going to do it right now. It's not. It's it's you're queuing it. Mm -hmm. And you can always unschedule and revert to draft. Cool. Yeah. So from here, I can go back to the uh, editor and hit posts and it will in the post list mention, hey, this is scheduled and it will be sent out tomorrow to um, the free subscribers. Yeah, super cool that it has that. Mm -hmm. um, great. So yeah, uh, well, we just went through post. We can look at pages. Pages are pretty similar. Uh, I think they're also relatively new. Ghost used to not differentiate between posts and pages as far as I know. You used to you used to make pages from the post tab. <laughs> so okay. you used to go to posts and you'd make a post and then there was a checkbox that said, this post is a page. It was very confusing. <laughs> um. So this is a little bit better, I think, perhaps. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so if we we just make a new page real quick, um, we can go in and this is a cool page. Yeah. We just stick with our theme. Um, it's going to be almost exactly the same experience, like right down to the blocks, things like that. Um, embedding images, alt text, uh, being able to embed YouTube or CodePen or PeerTube, um, just Unsplash, everything's going to be the same. Um, if you want to know how to use the page editor, you can go back and watch the last 10 minutes of this video again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, so. This is so interesting that oh, the, I, the, I haven't, uh, we haven't used the paywall features because we don't have any paid newsletters, but mm -hmm. you can have a paywall and just choose, all right, this is the free stuff. This is the paid stuff. Yep. Very and so only paid members uh, would be able to see that. That's neat. Yeah. Um, and then I think similarly, if you go into that uh, right hand menu um, right there, yeah, it, 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 it'll be almost exactly the same URL publish date. Hey, while we're here, do we want to look at uh, page access? Uh, sure. uh, oh, you could change authors. You could make me an author. Um, 
There you go. Uh, Interesting that you can have more than one too. Yes, uh -huh. that's nice. I like that for attribution purposes. I think that's yeah. good. Um, it's pretty, pretty similar. Um, one thing, do we want to look at tags while we're here? Sure. Yeah. So there, there are tags. Um, I believe you can make, yeah, you can make new ones right in here mm -hmm. um, or use an existing tag that it, I think news is a tag that just is a default one in ghost. Yeah. Um, Cause there's some, it's, an, it's your newsletter. Yeah. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. And so uh, you'll be able to filter by tags um, internally and externally. Uh, so if we made this and then we went back to the, this is the premiere page. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if you publish this, Taylor, um, publish, continue, final review, you'll note that there's no option to email it because this is not a post. Um, your page has been published. Uh, this is very funny because this is the exact same thing they show you when you publish a post. It's like, boom, your post is out there. Uh, so, but uh, if you go back in to inside the ghost admin menu, you go back to the list of back to dashboard, um, to the list of pages, you should be able to in the top uh, filter all tags, all authors. So you can, those are only the cool stuff pages. Uh, stuff that you've written versus stuff that we've all written versus, yeah. Um, and so you can you can filter and see what's available to who, which is neat. I assume that you can either do some of this in WordPress base or that people have made extensions somewhere, but it's nice that this is just all native to Ghost, I think. Yeah, you can do this kind of filtering in WordPress, um, but, uh, but I, I like the way they handle this in Ghost. It's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty simple. And I'll just say as a general rule, maybe something I should have said earlier, when we compare Go WordPress to Ghost and say, this is also how it works in WordPress, I would consider that a compliment because WordPress has been around for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> and it has a lot of features. And Ghost is, is not that old. Uh, Ghost yeah. is like, I think, a little over 10 years old. Um, so comparatively, a lot less time in the oven. And a lot of this is new. Like we keep yeah. saying Ghost is developing a lot of really good new features at a pretty rapid rate. Um, yeah, which uh, it's very interesting. They seem to have really ramped things up in the last couple of years because beforehand, my impression of Ghost was it didn't get new features almost ever. And it wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily a problem. It just, it just was, it was the thing it was. And um, yeah, I think they've really, um, in the last few years with their kind of push into newsletters have really found a lot more success. Yeah, so. I like that. I, that's, I think they're doing a really good job. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, I have on my list post new pages. We did tags. Um, so the last thing really on my list is uh, creating separate feeds. Yeah, so I, separate newsletters, really. Yes, essentially. Um, so you can have more than one newsletter on a ghost site. Um, and again, I'll show my example here. We'll make one in a second. But um, my example here is on our Reclaim Hosting blog. If I go in here and go to emails and then manage, we've got three of them. Um, so there's the main one, the mid-month, and community chats. And to be honest, we're still playing with what these should be called and how many. I, I think we may end up having more than these three and trying to separate them out a little bit more, but we'll see. We, we don't, yeah, <laughs> we're still playing with it. Um, and uh, people can opt in and out of them, which is really great. But also when you're authoring a new post, you can choose which one it belongs to. So people get the email or don't, depending on their preferences. Yeah. It's very simple to make these. So you just go to your settings in Ghost, mm -hmm. and then you go down to um, the email newsletter section. And so the, in here, there's like, you can turn off newsletters entirely. Um, you can uh, you can actually set the, the default settings for who's going to receive emails, which is interesting. So that was on that last screen we were looking at where it was like, all right, ready to publish and send. Um, mm -hmm. You can change the default there, um, but, but you can also make new n newsletters and even archive old ones. So um, you can just go in here, hit add newsletter, give it a name. Let's call this um, a less cool newsletter. Oh, well, okay. An alternative, no, no, no. An alternative. <laughs> <laughs> 
but still cool newsletter. There you go. <laughs> um, there you go. And you can, you know, put a description in here if you want. Um, and you can also choose, hey, is everyone who's currently subscribed to the other newsletter going to be subscribed to this one too or not? Um, so you can. That's a nice feature. That. That, that's a nice feature, particularly, I think we're thinking about running community chats in this now. Um, we are as of yeah. this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But so uh, saying, all right, if you're signed up for community chats, have you signed up to receive our newsletter and vice versa? And so that's a nice way, I think, of controlling um, who and who's subscribed to what and what people have chosen to be subscribed to. Yeah, for sure. And like for for my purposes, I did leave an opt in because I was like, yeah, this is one email a month that they would be receiving. So I'm going to include everyone who's already subscribed to our blog. They'll also get the community chat news, but of course they can turn that off if they want to. Um, but then I also imported a list just like we just did via CSV of everyone who was use who said, I want to know about new community chats um, via the other tool we used to use. And I only included those people on the community chat email. So I didn't opt them into any additional emails basically. Um, yeah. So it is nice that it's granular but also mm -hmm. pretty easy to manage. Like I didn't have to do much of anything to do that. In fact, there were quite, a, there was some crossover, right? So I would say almost half of the people that were on the, I want a community chat email list were already in the blog anyway. So it just skipped those people basically. Yeah. Nice. And that's the thing we were talking about of you're not going to overwrite data for anybody yeah. unless you're deliberately doing it on purpose, which you're not. Mm -hmm. Um, that pretty much wraps up everything on my list. We got through this in, yeah, about 45 minutes. Uh, is there anything that I have not touched on that you think that we should? Well, I do want to finish this up really oh, quick because yes, totally. there are some newsletter related settings in here. And this goes for whether you're doing one newsletter or two okay, or, or more really. Um, but you get to pick this so you can go in here. I'm actually going to hit save and just can show you tell Taylor you... is the one who set these up and not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I didn't set anything up for the, the blog or the roundup um, because your, your first newsletter just is automatically there. Basically, mm -hmm. you don't have to set one up by default. When you set up your mail settings, it's going to just work. Okay. Um, so, but you can go into either of these and edit. And so you can say, oh, I want to use a different name for this one. You can change the uh, sender name and email and even the reply to, so they can all be separate if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, you can choose which ones are automatic for new members to be subscribed to. So this would be if someone went to your site and said, oh, I want that. You can choose what is the default um, so for our blog, you by default get all three of the categories, but you could opt people out if you want to. You can um, you can choose to include this little like uh, ghost uh, bat thing in the footer. I think we have that on on ours, um, but uh, that sounds right. One hundred percent sure. Um, you can have a description here. There are designs, so you can put header images in. You can decide, oh, I don't want the publication title in there or the newsletter name, you can you can turn those things off separately. So the publication title is the title of the website and the newsletter name is the, the title of the newsletter, which is in this case, the same thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me um, look at this other one. In this case, it's not the same thing. So you can you know choose if you want both in there or not. Oh well, yeah. Um, you can uh, include the post title or not in the email, which is kind of interesting. Um, you can, you know, have a few basic font and options and stuff like that. Do you want the featured image in there or not? Do you want a feedback footer? I think that's the thumbs up, thumbs down. Yep. Link to mm -hmm. comments in there. Uh, you can include like recent other posts. recent stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, and subscription details in here, which is, this is kind of interesting too. And then I'll just mention just because we haven't shown this, I, th this just works out of the box. These emails have the unsubscribe, the one click unsubscribe feature, which is I think important. That's a, I think that's a legal requirement. It, well, it's not, I don't think by law, but, but, but most um, big email companies will, will mm -hmm. put your bulk email to spam if you don't have a one click unsubscribe. Oh, okay. Um, so okay. Like Gmail will start 
if you're sending out hundreds of emails to hundreds of Gmail people, um, eventually, and, and you don't have a one click on subscribe, you are at risk of being marked as a spam uh, sender. So gotcha. Yeah. So there's, it's not like there's themes in here, but there are some basic, you know, uh, options to mess with. And then they're, they're newsletter dependent. So yeah. Um, and that, that sort of makes sense as well, because it's not like you're setting up a whole new site. This is specifically yeah. for the emails that you are sending out. You're changing the style. Yeah. Uh, so making a whole new theme for those doesn't super make sense because it's not a new site. It's just a newsletter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And th there's, you know, there's a lot of other things in here. We're not going to go through everything at all. Um, we're, we're pretty much, I think, got through most things we want to. But mm -hmm. um, I will just say the settings in here are, up. A, I love that there's a search. That's yes. amazing. Very good. Um, and, but, you know, most of them in here are pretty simple. So, you know, you will want to, like, if you're going to be setting up a new main publication or site, you probably do want to kind of give this a once over, right? Because mm -hmm. there are things in here like the description, just like WordPress, just another WordPress site. This every ghost blog has thoughts, stories, ideas as the site description. I'll be honest, I like that a little that. more than just another WordPress blog. I like so. just another WordPress blog, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, in both cases, probably something you're going to want to change. Yeah. Um, oh, you can change the date and time right here. Yes. You don't have to go into Reclaim so Cloud. It, it does actually change it right or uh, set it right from Ghost, which is nice. Yeah. Um, so you can change that in here if you want to. Um, you can set the publication language, uh, which is important. Um, if, if you're not uh, publishing in English, you will want to change that because it's going to default to English mm -hmm. on our installer. Um, you can choose the title and description for metadata. It's going to use your site title and, and site description here, but if you wanted to tweak it and how it shows up in search engines, you can do that. Um, same with X and Facebook. Um, and you can actually link have link to uh, Facebook and Twitter profiles in here, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, you can have the entire site be private if you want to. Um, That's neat. I hadn't realized that was a feature because we get people asking about, or I got people, when I was an admin uh, for Domain of One Zone, I got people asking about how do I make that happen for my site? And my answer was like, there's not a great way to do it. Um, yeah, on WordPress, I always point people to the My Private Site plugin, yeah, um, that's, which it, will do it. But you yeah. can, yeah, on WordPress, it's pretty easy to make a single page or post private. It's not very easy to make your whole site private. I think it um, requires a plugin if yeah. you want a password on it. If you don't and want to have like only, uh, well, Total and there's lockdown. also, a, we have an article too on um, an Apache solution that would, that also does it too. But mm -hmm. yes, it is a little bit more involved. Um, yeah, or whereas website. this is very simple uh, and easy to do. Yeah, um, we've already been through the design and branding, the theme stuff. I, I already showed navigation and announcement bar too. Um, there is some stuff in the portal. So like you can actually customize this little sign in button, basically mm -hmm. the account page. So you can um, you can actually turn it off if you don't want that little floating button at the bottom right. Um, you can do that. You can change what the icon is and what the text is, which is actually really interesting um, to me because I didn't realize that. Because <laughs> um, I, I don't. Um, didn't you have to hard code changes to that when we first started the roundup? I don't think I did. Sh what does the roundup say, actually? No. Um, oh, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to say, I, I, because I, subscribe makes sense from an email context, but sometimes they're going to, some people are going to take subscribe as a paid thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's really cool that you can just change that. Um, you can change, you can have like a support email address in here, oh, which yeah, is really yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, display name. Oh, you can choose not to ask for people's names. That's actually really cool. I like that. Um, and then we didn't go into this, but there are tiers too. So separate from, uh, uh, from the newsletters, you can have like paid tiers. We've mentioned mm -hmm. that this is possible. Um, but you can have certain newsletters behind certain paid tiers and stuff like that. So that's also something you can do from here. Um, and you can, you know, change like, all right, by default, are all new posts public or, or how is that working? Who gets to see by what? By default is commenting on. So by default right now, commenting is is not available for posts. Um, that's the default option. Um, uh, ghosts commenting is 
pretty limited kind of on purpose. So you can either have no comments, you can have paid only people comment, or mm -hmm. you can have anyone comment, but they do need to make an account. So they have to sign in with their email. Um, Ghost does not have like anonymous commenting the way WordPress does. Um, but the flip side to that is if you want to have comments on your WordPress blog, you really need to use a Kismet or something like it to block, to, to block blog spam. Um, this is less of a problem because Ghost requires a login. So um, it's it just like one of those things that's a little bit different. The, 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 the downside though is I see very few people ever comment on Ghost posts because because of that. So yeah, it's kind of a bummer to me, but um, that's not important to everyone and is certainly not the norm with newsletters, right? I think most newsletters don't, and that, and that is really what Ghost is focused on. Um, don't have a lot of comment activity. So um, I love this. So there's very basic analytics built into Ghost. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is not third party, right? This is tracked by your application. So it's very private, which is nice um, in that you're not sending this to Google or another provider. Um, but uh, and it will actually do this for newsletter um, and like outbound links from newsletters and stuff, but you can also turn it off, which I love that that's right in here. Um, I'm gonna be honest, this is a brand new feature that I have not looked at anymore, but they have some kind of network effect of other ghost sites that they're working on right now that's in beta. So you can basically like recommend or be part of recommendations from other ghost newsletters, which is interesting. Well, that's fun because that that we talked about um, Substack has a network effect going on that people like. But yeah, if you I think this is directly an answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, be, also, because people were worried about like if Substack is going to automatically feature me along other side uh, alongside other people. Uh, how do you feel about that versus um, what? Yeah. What what is what is. Um, possible to do for recommendations yeah the the, mm -hmm. the difference so i will say is this is not algorithmic so this yes. is a and that's nice. literally I, I like that yeah. yeah uh you're literally adding the url this is basically a blog roll <laughs> this yeah. is just a 20 this is just a a new take on the blog roll basically mm -hmm. um the this is cool too so you can take your sign up form that was on our main page you can you can actually tweak this and then embed it on any web page yeah. And I recently used this for our community chats. I just typed in the wrong URL. Let me try that again. Um, so on our Reclaim Ed Tech website, this is a WordPress site. Um, I We switched over the emails for these to be done through the blog. And I just embedded our, our sign up right here. So I said, hey, you can sign up, just do this. And when you do this, it will sign up for emails, which is super neat um, and was very simple. I will say I was... I spent maybe a few hours looking at some kind of API based integration with gravity forms on how to do this until I realized that I could just do this. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, way, way simpler. You can even give people a label, which I really like. So in ours, it does label. So we know, oh, you signed up from here. To be honest, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that information, but I wanted to have that as an option. So yeah. um, you can change how it looks, which is cool too. Sweet. Um, most of the other stuff here we've covered or is kind of out of scope outside, for yeah. this. So, you know, we've talked about newsletter stuff. We've already done mail gun settings. I will mention here, there is a little section on integrations. So basically just things that work with Ghost. This is all like API based stuff. I don't know if we've mentioned this in this session, but, or in this flex course yet, but Ghost really does not have plugins. There is no. No, nothing to speak of in the way of plugins, the way WordPress has plugins that can extend its functionality really significantly. If in case you didn't know, like it can do all kinds of crazy things with plugins. Ghost doesn't really have that. Um, there are integrations that, but they're usually like Zapier where you make an account and, and either use Zapier's free account or, or sign up for a paid plan. Um, but they're, they're, this is basically just a highlight of, oh, here's some APIs that you can hook up. Um, so that's where you do that from here. Um, there are other custom integrations that you can set up that aren't in there from other tools that will give you some instructions you have to follow, basically. And then you would do that with this custom integration button. Um, if you're familiar with like API keys, that's what this is. 
So, um, yeah. there, think... there's also this fantastic migration tool. Sorry, mm -hmm. Tyler. Well, I was going to say, I think we should do the migration tool and then we're actually at the hour. So we should yeah, uh, we'll start here. to wrap up, but, um, just, we've been talking about, uh, importing from Substack in particular migrations there, but, uh, ghost offers these options, importing from Substack, importing from medium, which I didn't know and MailChimp, which is great. Uh, <laughs> Very good. Um, and then the universal import. Um, and uh, they actually have documentation as well uh, available on in migrating your whole site from mm -hmm. Substack or from WordPress, um, which there's not a universal, a, a specific import set, setting for WordPress, but uh, they pretty clearly know where their people might be coming from. Yeah. It, this, so this, and it's important to know that this isn't just members, right? This is posts and things it's everything too. so um it it is trying to um be a very unique or unique uh comprehensive uh migration mm -hmm. um i love this download all of your posts and settings into one single glorious json file i've used this a lot with ghost sites it's actually really easy to migrate them because it does basically the same thing as the wordpress export where it's just posts and just members and all that stuff but ghost doesn't have plugins and it also doesn't have that many themes so we were looking at the themes before there's there are other themes and people make third-party ones but it's not quite the ecosystem wordpress is it's kind of simple to move a ghost site using that file because of that so uh because there's just not much variation in that um so this is good though especially if you're coming from substack or medium or mailchimp uh, check that out um i'm gonna really quickly mention in here so code injection lets you do things like put uh, like a HTML in the header or footer, which is interesting if you need to do like uh, other analytics stuff. And then the labs is actually has a lot of stuff in it. So there is in the labs the uh, ability to um, set up the redirects. Um, that's the main one I wanted to point. There's some other things in here. I haven't really used them, but the redirects we mentioned, if you need to set up a redirect in Ghost, you, you download a file and then like fill it out and then you upload it back. So that's how that works. Yeah. Um, and then and if finally, we don't have documentation on that, we can get here, it. So. Oh yeah, and then the log. Yeah, they, cool. we don't have it, but um, there is, well, maybe, maybe we do, but um, there is- uh, There's tutorials and own. things. Yeah. All right, thank you all. Uh, that, yep, we're just a little past the hour. And so I think it's good time to wrap up. I think we've covered just about everything that we need to, uh, that you might need in order to get started. We do have uh, redirects. I should have taken go. your hint the second time you brought it up. You'd be like, Taylor, I know there's- I didn't remember. I, I thought you wrote it. I didn't remember. <laughs> I thought you wrote it. Um, but uh, thank you all for joining us for this last final session of uh, Newsletters with Ghost. I've had a really good time. I hope that you have too. Um, and. I was going to say happy newsletting, but that doesn't make any happy, sense. Happy newsletting. I, I love think, that. Uh, I like, think we can it's like do better. It's like bloodletting. Happy newslettering. Happy writing. Happy, happy writing. writing. Yeah. Happy writing. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.